Well, I knew it would eventually come to this. I will be refurbishing all of the trim in the car. This is the driver's uh, door piece. You can see it has the date code on it, 1984, and Bear, made by Bear. They make, man, they make all kind of products. Like the glove box trim, it has an inner wooden piece uh, that everything is connected to. It has these studs in here, these threaded shafts. Uh, these go through the door panel, and you have these little uh, lock nuts that uh, hold it on the door. You know, the same old stuff. The veneer is coming off of the aluminum this has fairly complicated shapes. This one will present a different challenge from the glove box. You can see this tight corner right here has some cracking in it. You can see where they cut the aluminum middle piece here so they could put a bend in it. And then I'm assuming they had some steam or heat treatment or something and they bent the veneer around the aluminum and glued it in place. I, I'm, I'm guessing that's what they did. The inner wooden piece appears to be firmly affixed to the aluminum. The inner portion of the wood is still firmly glued to the aluminum. So I don't think we'll need to do anything with that. That's a little nasty right there. I'll have to clean that up a little bit. But nobody will see that anyway. That'll be behind the uh, door panel. What we'll do is we'll use a little heat gun and we'll get this top veneer off here. And I think, you know, the only thing we've got to contend with is some cracking. And to be honest with you, we may not do anything with the cracking. You'll note that we have some cracking here. I don't know if that's a crack in the, in the wood or if it's a crack in just the top level of the coating let's see if we can determine that there is an inner layer right there and that inner layer does not appear to be cracked now the top layer the coating appears to be cracked whether or not that is wood I don't know all right so enough of all that analysis we just have to get this uh, top piece of veneer off of this piece and then we'll figure out what we need to do with it. It could be we just glue it back down with some JB Weld and go on about our business. All right, round two, uh, we did not disconnect or delaminate the aluminum middle part from the underlying wood. So I went ahead and cleaned up the top veneer a little bit with some sandpaper and decided to go ahead and glue it down with our good old friend JB Weld. And we started off with rubber bands and our good old string. Now this piece had a lot of cracking on it. You'll notice also here that you see this, this really nasty crack here, okay? Guess what? Let me show you something. Bear with me. Guess what? You're not going to see that that is completely covered up by the door. You won't see any of that. The only thing you're going to see is the top. And as you can tell, this one's got some cracking in it as well, and we'll take it off eventually to uh, rebuild it as well. All right, I did a little more sanding with the 100, and I stepped up and did some wet sanding with some 600 wet dry paper. And I know this looks pretty rough here, but it's actually smooth. This is where the wood veneer cracked, because when they put this together at the factory, they have to take this veneer and bend it around this way, right? And the trim of the, the, door, the door panel comes in and lays over the top of this, like kind of like that. So you don't see this corner. But this corner is actually has a break in it, either on purpose or maybe over, or maybe over, over the years. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so up next, we're going to put a little stain here, see if we can cover up some of these uh, little places where the bare wood is showing. And then after that dries, we'll um, there's another spot where the, where the bare wood is showing. And, uh, but it's smooth though. And after the uh, initial uh, staining, we'll uh, put, uh, you know, probably three or four layers of polyurethane on this guy. And uh, you'll be able to see these cracks, but you know, at least they'll be glossy. So, <laughs> all right, more later. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing to the uh, driver's side door panel. I uh, just got through cleaning it up a little bit with some McGuire's just to do a general inspection. But here on the back side, this uh, cardboard uh, door card was sitting on top of this little plastic flange. There was a 
a noticeable gap back here, right? There's this big gap. And I was trying to figure out what, you know, what was going on with that. Did they do that from the factory? Okay, sure, maybe they did. Uh, is it for airflow? I don't know. I don't have a clue. Uh, all I know is I don't like it. So this is what I'm going to do. I uh, took the Dremel tool and I notched out the uh, cardboard. And uh, once you do that, you can press that down and get a nice flush fit. Well, how are you going to keep it like that? Okay, fine. Go get, your, uh, go get you some spare sheet metal out of your stash. Put it in your bench vise and uh, do this to it. Right? And I still have to do some trimming. But I think you know where I'm going with this. Okay, I gotta I gotta trim it here to get it uh, so it doesn't sit on this thing, um, and then we're going to scuff this up, clean it with acetone, do the same thing with this, and we're going to JB weld this to here like this, and we're going to and then we're going to clamp it down like that. That is my plan. We're going to see if it's going to work. So stay tuned. All right, this is what we have, folks. We've got a piece of metal. Uh, bent at uh, 90 degree with a flange on it there and I've got two small pieces of wood epoxied to the uh, underside of the flange uh, and got it held in place with a uh, wood clamp now on the on the underside pressing against the out outer part of the door panel I've got a, a, a wooden shim uh, surrounded by a rag so that the clamp won't harm the uh, the door panel we're gonna let this dry for oh I don't know 12 hours. We're going to see how well it works. I've, uh, I've stepped up to using quick weld. We're going to see how well quick weld holds up. Okay, the clamp is off. It's the next day and it looks like this little setup is going to work out pretty well. Got a nice solid uh, clamp down of the uh, door card here. I guess this is uh, medium density fiberboard. So I have uh, JB Weld underneath this metal flange, but so between the metal and the plastic and then around it as well. The idea being here that if you wanted to remove this someday, this this should slip out of there. I also need to fix this little area right here. You've got you know one of these one of these hooks, and it is broken off. So I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to bend a piece of metal at a 90 degree angle and sort of recreate a hook right here. This is panning out pretty good. I did a test fit on the door already. Basically, just slip this up against the door and sort of put it in place. I wanted to make sure I didn't have any interference, that this wasn't sticking out too far. And it looks like it's going to uh, work out pretty well. Um, the door card itself is in really good condition, except for the holes cut by the cup holder, which will be put back in place, so that'll be covered up, thankfully. This is this is kind of an odd thing. I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, this I guess this was stretched at some point. Really not sure what quite happened there. It looks kind of weird, doesn't it? So if you guys have some ideas about that, put them in the comments below. I'd be curious to know what that is. So these guys here slip down into the the uh, the channel on the top of the door, and this one is broken off. I have this piece of plastic over there on the other bench. I think maybe I'll take an, a piece of sheet metal and I'll uh, I'll make a reinforcement and probably do like a piece of sheet metal, glue it in first and provide a backing and then put the plastic over the top of it. Something similar to that. So as we go along, my whole goal is to uh, get this door panel, you know, back to its, uh, you know, original glory. You know, it can be modified a little bit, but I want it to fit nice and tight and not rattle around. So that's my goal. So more later. All right, as soon as we decide to get the door panel back on the car, our trim is now done. As I stated earlier, I knew that you would be able to see these cracks, but I'm okay with it. They have like three layers of polyurethane now, so it's nice and solid. It doesn't rattle around. This veneer was disconnected from the aluminum underneath, and it was all flopping all over the place. It was a mess. Once we get this on the car, I think it's going to look pretty nice. Again, I, I think the discoloration... Uh, here, you see it's kind of dingy right in there. I think that's from just years of people rubbing their arm on it since it's on the driver's door. So, But I think this is going to look pretty good once we get it back on the car. All right, it just keeps getting better. Uh, we replaced one of these 
That's kind of nasty. We gotta clean that. So I made a new one of these out of some steel sheet metal. And I've got that epoxy drying right now. So another area we have to address is we're missing one of these clips uh, similar to that. Uh, so missing one right there. Let me see if I can't find some of those online. My goal is to get this door panel really tight. I don't want any issues and I don't want any rattles. All right, this is what we've got in order to repair or reattach this flange here, you'll notice that all the rest of them are in uh, good condition. When I uh, removed this door panel, this piece had, was already broken, but I found this small piece of plastic out, either lying in the floorboard or lying in the bottom of the door, or it might have fallen out onto the floor. I can't recall. I, the, when I saw it, I, I looked at it, uh, hmm, that's got to go somewhere. I better hold on to it. So I did. And it took me a while to figure out where this went. I cut some more sheet metal and I bent it at uh, nearly 90 degrees. Sort of curved it here because you'll note we have some, some curves here. So we need to mimic that. So I curved that one, that one and that one as well. But it's covered up with mostly with uh, JB Weld now. And I let that dry for just a little while and let it uh, firm up. And then I went back and added these metal strips. Only thing is, this is a little wider than stock. You know, the channel in the car, you know, it, I think it can expand a little bit. So let this thing dry, and I think maybe tomorrow we're going to start getting this door panel back on the car. Broken plastic retainer tabs? No problem. That's what you have right there. Right, before we get our door panel back on the car, I have been giving some thought to a vapor barrier of sorts. So right now, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and cover up the big hole here. So I've got some, just some plastic from a, uh, a garbage bag and I've got some 3M uh, strip caulk. So you just peel this stuff off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it in that channel right there and uh, put a little piece of plastic over that just to cover up that, uh, that hole right there. Just a little vapor protection and uh, we're gonna move on. I'll show you more. All right, we've got our strip caulk around the hole there. We've got our plastic bag stuck to it. And then all we have to do now is just trim around it and we'll be done. All right, we're going to go ahead and put our door panel back on the car. So here we are. Here's our door panel all ready to go. One thing you want to keep in mind is clearly that uh, your seat adjuster and your door handle, these things want to be all loosey-goosey. Uh, you don't want to be trying to put the door panel on there unless those are loose. Uh, you'll just end up breaking stuff, okay? So anytime you take the door panel on or off of the car, you need those, these things need to be loosened up, okay? So again, you've got these uh, these nice little holes here, okay, in your in your uh, in your door, and of course the uh, the door panel has uh, these plastic flanges here that uh, go inside. Hell, where's the other one? There it is, over there. A uh, little plastic flange over there. There's one over there. And and obviously these guys here need to slip down into the channel here. So it's kind of a fiddly process. I'm not going to film it. And uh, hopefully it won't take me that long. So stand by. We'll be right back with you. All right. Seat switch cover. You have these, this slot here and this slot here and this center area right here. And that center area right there has a little raised spot that, that belongs to this cover, okay? Now your seat switch cover has plastic flanges that interact with all that stuff. Also, we have this guy on the other end, and that's got to slip under there first. and then slip back in there. So let me do this with two hands. Let's see if we can get this thing on here first, or at least started, and then we'll, we'll pull it back off and tighten these screws. All right, that looks good. You just gotta be real careful with it because there's not a lot of room between this uh, switch and the, the wood. 
Hopefully our geometry won't change when I tighten these screws. Now we have a little plastic washer, which apparently is supposed to go over this guy right here. Well, that was easy. And let's put our uh, let's put our switch covers on or our knobs, I guess you want to call them. Put the big one on first, I reckon. One last item. We got to put this little cover on right here, and then well, I'll take that back. We got this item, and then the drink holder. Hmm. Maybe that goes in first. What says the peanut gallery? Yeah, that goes in first. Then this side. Ah. Well, all right, we've got our driver's door back together again and back on the car. Uh, I think it's looking pretty good, aside for our little stretched piece right there, uh, where the previous owner rested their elbow while they were driving. But uh, we got everything back on there, and it's uh, looking pretty good. The, uh, the wood trim, which was the primary focus of this uh, little maintenance we did on the door, is nice and solid. And um, it doesn't rattle. It doesn't flip-flop around. It's reattached. It's permanently glued in place again. Got our, even got our, our little drink holder back in place. And it's uh, some things to keep in mind when you uh, remove or reinstall a door panel on the car. You want to make sure you loosen the seat adjustment controls and loosen the door handle and, and just pull just pull the screws out of the seat adjustment control and the uh, the door handle there and before you before you try to move this thing around right because you, what you've got to do is you've got to lift it up and then pull it out. Yeah, there's a bunch of other videos on YouTube on how to do this. So I'm not this is not an instructional video on how to uh, remove or install a, a door panel, but that's just a, a helpful hint for you. So uh, all in all, I think it turned out pretty well. We had some plastic pieces that were broken and uh, the, the quick weld, JB weld stuff and some extra sheet metal that uh, that worked out really well. So I would definitely recommend that. All right. Well, that's all for this video, folks. I'm glad you guys stopped by my channel. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and join us again real soon.